Hey boys and girls, we're here at Boxable in Las Vegas, and we're gonna have a chance to have a look inside uh, one of their units right here. Galliano is gonna show us around, so, uh, and, and look at I got poker chips. So it's a sure bet that, uh, that this is gonna be a good video. There you go. Okay, let's have a look and all you right. can tell me all about it. Let's check it out. This is the Boxable Casita, step inside. Great. So yeah, you know, welcome in. This is actually our first product that we're starting off as part of our building system. It's a little uh, studio apartment. It's about 20 feet by 20 feet with nine and a half foot high ceilings. We have a whole ton of innovation here, more than meets the eye. And the idea behind the company is that our technology is gonna enable mass production of housing because right now most houses are not built in a factory. And of course, you know, how uh, everything is, is much more higher quality, more uh, reduced costs, more efficiency if you build it in a factory. So we have a bunch of innovations that's gonna make that possible. And we'd love to give you a tour. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd like to see, but you know, let's just go over here and have a look at a little bit here on, uh, on how, how this looks. I mean, this has got, uh, this is all the, this has got all the creature comforts at home. And if you're if you're a um, a hunter, I, I like to hunt. Um, I could um, I could I could definitely uh, see me, you know, having this as a hunting lodge. I mean, you've got <laughs> you even got a dishwasher. There you go. So, I mean, this is all what I think is high quality. And then when I look in here at this bathroom, so we got a washer dryer kind of combination. That's right. And then you look at the bathroom. Why don't you pop in there? I mean, look at the shower. I mean, this thing's this is big enough for anybody. This it's is great. not like uh, it's it's comfy like too. You know, if you want to uh, try it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe in a while. Not not right now. Yeah, you know, um, we really tried really hard to not compromise on anything. Uh, we had to solve the shipping problem for houses. The reason houses are not built in a factory is they're just so big. Yeah. So we wanted to figure out how to ship these buildings highway legal at the lowest possible cost, but we didn't want to have a compromised room dimension. We didn't want to have low ceilings. We didn't want to have small appliances. Right. And we pretty much were able to achieve everything we wanted. And the resulting building is not only going to be lower costs than people can build using traditional methods, but much faster to build. They're also going to have higher ratings. So our buildings will have high uh, wind, wind ratings, snow load on them, uh, massive energy efficiency. Uh, the list kind of goes on of the various metrics where the boxable buildings are outperforming the traditional methods. So of course we're here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada with our first factory. We've, be, we've been in production now for just about a year. And uh, as we walk around, you'll see that the way we're building these houses is, is very different than what you would see uh, in, in any traditional methods for, for building houses. So uh, we, could, we can start right over here and get a look at some of the materials that are actually in the walls. Um, of course, you know, mo most houses are built with lumber frame, wood and nails. We've kind of scoured the whole world for different building materials, different manufacturing methods to meet all the various requirements that you need for a building. And we landed on these laminated uh, panels. So essentially we've gone from, you know, a regular wall assembly that might have a thousand nails in it, a hundred little pieces of wood down to these, these bigger parts. So what we do over here is we, we lay them out. So in this generation of the product, we have the steel skin. So for example, these are, four foot by uh, 10 foot sheets. So we'll lay out five of those sheets. Then we'll come over that with polyurethane adhesive. Then we'll lay out uh, the EPS foam core and then another layer, which is the interior wall board. And then around the perimeter of that panel, we'll put in these LVL and, and PVC extrusions. 
Uh, this is still the first gen. In the next gen, we're moving to uh, basically fiber cement board, EPS fiber cement board. And you know, another thing about this process is all these materials are, are cut and formed by computer controlled cutting equipment so that they can all assemble, assemble together in a very precise automated way. Oh, and this is machined. Yeah, so this is actually cut with a, a hot wire. So we get the big blocks of foam in and then, and then we cut them down to the exact you know, shapes that we need to give us things like holes for you know, electricity, uh, electric uh, wires and, and, and other things. So is that, is that cut or is it extruded those? The, no, the, no, the foam it's, it's is a big foam block that's wire. actually cut by a hot wire. Yeah. Um, and there's other, there's other methods for cutting that too that we're exploring. Mm -hmm. uh, this PVC is extruded um, and, and then uh, cut. Yeah, and then, you know, this, this, uh, this is all kind of first generation stuff. We got in here from a single, you know, prototype that we built by hand and ran straight into this, you know, this, this production rate that we're at now. So we're now taking a step to go to the next generation of the product, all new manufacturing equipment. So over the next six months, we're gonna be changing all that stuff up and uh, it's gonna be much better. For example, right now we build one wall in about 20 minutes. And of course, that's way better than the speed it takes to build a traditional wall. Um, but after we get this new equipment in, we think maybe like two, two to three minutes or something like that per, per wall. Yeah, I, right here, you've got a huge opportunity. I would never uh, do this in a production kind of uh, atmosphere. I would never machine it because can, you can form this. I mean, yep. uh, and when you put it in a steam box, it's free almost. Right. And then you pop this in. In, a, in order to uh, get these holes and whatnot in, just put in a pipe yeah. box and then blow uh, blow the foam around, or actually yeah. let the foam expand around it and you're all done. Actually, this and that could go into the same box. And uh, now you're done in not two minutes, you're done in a few seconds. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the best ways to make. Uh, yeah. It one of the concepts we're exploring. Yeah, I, that, you don't have to explore that too much. That's being done right now. So uh, you yeah. might, you might want to yeah. just jump straight into it. So one of the next things we're going to do is our own full foam molding plant, which yeah. if it makes sense, will include a, a custom mold so that we can take the yeah. hot wire cutting out of the mix there. Yeah. Um, and then this is, this is EPS foam, styrofoam. Yes. Yeah, uh, we've looked at other stuff like polyurethane and this makes the most sense for yeah. a number of reasons. Well, it's um, the least expensive. If you go to EPP, um, you know, you could get maybe some more strength out of it and stuff like that, but just more money. Yeah. You really don't need it. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. The, the, the weight, uh, the strength uh, and the energy efficiency, those yeah. are the main things, yeah. you know, we're getting thermal out conductivity, too. This is good for yeah. Uh, yeah. keeping out the hot and the cold. Yeah. So so a traditional wall, you have lots of lumber studs that are leaking yeah. energy and right. we don't have that. This is going to be uninterrupted right. EPS thrown yeah. through the hole. So what um, are you using to glue it together? So that, that's this line up here. So this is a, the vacuum lamination system. Um, that first little thing with the red and black lines, that's where the uh, polyurethane, water activated polyurethane is extruded out. So that rides over the top of the panel as the layers go down. And then it gets pushed further in to that, that far side of the machine, which is actually a, a vacuum lamination. So it pulls the air out and then the atmospheric pressure push, pushes down the weight on top. Um, but so it's kind of like a verum process, like Sorry? a verum. If you're, if it's a verum process, a vacuum um, system, yeah. they kind of use that for like exotic, uh, like airplanes, yes. uh, like uh, carbon fiber airplanes and whatnot. Yeah, there, there's a few pros and cons to this method, and we're actually switching in our next gen to just like a, a, a mechanical. flat uh, mechanical press. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, so a number of reasons why why we like yeah. that. Um, and then uh, the, the adhesive extruders will be pretty much the same in the next gen. And then actually, you know, this, this universal um, panel with, with no seal, just fiber cement board is going to then get fed into a cutter that's going to cut it down to the smaller panel sizes yeah. later on for that next gen. Hmm. Well, let's, let's go down and have a peek. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go this way a little bit. Um, you can see some of this. So, uh, you know, we've got a few, you know, CNC cutters over here. So one piece that you didn't see there was the, the internal surface of the wall, which is um, type magnesium oxide board. It's gonna be fiber cement board, similar product, uh, but we're cutting that 
over there just with a regular CNC. Um, and then here we're cutting these LVL lumber pieces to, sh to shape. And then we're gluing that PVC to that LVL over down there. Um, and we've also, for that next gen, we've been able to cut out. Right now, all of that lumber has that PVC laminated to it. In the next gen, a lot of it is just lumber only with no, no PVC in it. So we were able to cut out a bunch of material on that because we realized we only needed it for certain reasons. Yeah. Yeah, so the material flow is from, this is the inside wall material and the lumber, it's all kitted up per wall panel, right? Every card is one panel and it all makes it to the lamination and then from there it flows that way. Hmm. Yeah. How soon do you want to have uh, up and running at the maximum speed that you want to get it going? Uh, you know, we're ready to, to improve what we're doing here ASAP. Uh, over the next six months, that, that new equipment comes in and, and some things change, like the assembly line of the actual parts into the final house yeah. will double in size uh, so that the jobs being done at those stations will change a little bit. Um, mm. But yeah, so here you can see uh, how it kind of goes together. Uh, this is just a, a sheet of uh, steel to give us some more, some more tension in, in the strength when we're doing, uh, bending the panel. Um, but aside from that, it's just, you know, it's got foam. Uh, LVL around the perimeter and they're actually pre-building it here and then they're going to take it apart and build it again uh, there on that next station just because at this level we're trying to make sure everything's uh, really really perfect. Huh. I never try and build anything two times. Why, Trust why me, I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, primarily it's because of some of the capability on the on, on the panels where we had some issues, some, you know, things were mixed while we were refining the proper, you know, process on the manufacturing side. Um, before we were cutting lengths by hand, the lengths of the material. Now we have a CNC machine. Yeah, so it's inefficiencies basically that we still yeah. have in the process. And, and, and the big thing is the, the, the glue is water activated. So it's kind of on a timer. So you have, you know, 20 minutes to assemble this thing or you got to scrap the whole thing. Yeah. So we wanted to avoid that happening. And then, like I said, once we move into this next set of equipment, that's all, that's all gone. You know, it'll all be fully automated, the panel production. Yeah, so, so this universal panel thing that we're doing, basically right now, you know, there's different panels on the building. There's a floor, there's a wall, there's a front wall, a side wall. They're all a little bit different shape. And since we're building them all individually now, the components that go into those are then, then all different. What we figured out now next is one single panel that gets built and laminated and then is cut to size later on. Right. So that dramatically reduces the components that goes into these panels beforehand. And it allows for easier customization later on, different windows, doors can be just all cut uh, as, as, a, as an afterthought. Uh, so this is a magnesium oxide board. Um, we're, we're switching to f uh, fiber cement board on both sides for the next gen. Yeah. Uh, but this is nice to good stuff too. So, so is this paintable or is this, yeah. that's it? Yeah, it's yeah. going to get painted in this next step right oh, over here. Right. Uh, no, so no, in the future, no, these panels, they're going to be coming off the mechanical press. Then they're going to be moved in a, in a overhead the conveying yeah. system yeah. and then go through a paint line. It's very easy to paint the flat surface, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And um, yeah, actually, uh, uh, you've got this is your paint booth here. Yeah, yeah, this is the this is the booth where we're sanding. Oh, you've got an open booth. This is a sanding booth with some yeah. airflow. Yeah. To it, and that's why they they mud it and they sand it, and mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes to painting. So this mm. is obviously something we're constantly looking at. Ideally, we wouldn't have to do this at all and come up with some sort of cover. Also, but this is currently well. Uh, one the of the process. things that people are doing now is skinning. There's a lot of um, a lot of different uh, wrapping materials that are available that, I mean, give you a fabulous uh, finish. But and if somebody wants to change the colors or something like that, well, they can. But it's going to be on their nickel, and it yeah. uh, a little tougher to do that. But if we if you paint them, are you, what what color are they? Painted, uh, so, we, so we were looking at different stuff like wallpaper type stuff to put on didn't yeah. find anything where the numbers really crunched and decided paint was the way to go just paint it white yeah. um, we're part of that those upgrades I was talking about is a whole new paint system where it's just a tunnel and it goes through the tunnel yeah. automatically 
Um, the, the real issue is the, the seams between the boards that you know you may or may not want, want to get rid of. You know when you have to go in there with you know like mud, like in traditional cheat rock uh, yeah, mud. Yeah. That's where you get this kind of like finessing that needs to be done by, by hand. So mm. we're considering just even leaving those seams in there as like a, a style feature. And I think that I, might be okay. Yeah, that's who I was thinking that when I saw the guy standing in here, why, why bother? Yep. I mean, really at the end of the day, people are looking at, you know, they, they know they're, they're getting something that's going to be inexpensive. So why waste time on, uh, mm. yeah. on uh, and, and, and they're, them up? You know, they're, they're, on the walls, they're going to be vertical seams, four feet apart. Uh, we were thinking we could machine them into a little, you know, strategically quarter inch recess or something. And it might look yeah. totally fine, but um, but we'll see. And, uh, you know, but, but this is what we're, we're going for now. Just this, uh, this is just, just one of the walls. That's, that's the, the door opening window opening. Holy mackerel. This stuff's kind of expensive. Most people don't even want to touch it. It's a, <clears throat> might be, uh, something to put on your list of, uh, maybe knocking, uh, knocking the price down. Yeah, I mean, we, we only use LVL in general because we needed like dimensional accuracy. Stability, yeah. Co common lumber is always a little bit warped uh, and that's not good for a product like this. So also here, all the electric goes in. So all the wires go through the chases. Yeah. So they pre-configure all that. Perfect, yeah. You see here, the all you see, we have connectors everywhere. So when yeah. the roof goes on top, they just connect it together yeah. basically. Plug and play, right. great, I love that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Today we have 11 stations. And as you see, we have some sitting on blocks and then casters. And then we have a little lift to move station by station. So all yeah. this, we're gonna double in the first uh, uh, take on it. We double the number of stations and it's going to be a chain conveying system. This, the things are going to sit yeah. on skis, yeah. leveling. This is an issue yeah. today. Always the leveling, you have walls on it and you move it, you pick it up. It's too much stress on the unit. Yeah, right. yeah. It's got to sit on the same pallet or carrier through the yeah. entire process. That's right. going to be huge improvement in the next step. Yeah. Yeah, it basically is station by station. You put one piece off the floor. This is where Paolo was talking earlier. That's a third of the space. And the next floor that you see over there, that's another two thirds. So when that unfolds, it triples the entire space. But everything, utilities, appliances, the kitchen, the bathroom, everything is installed in that section there, Yeah, which is gonna be good you know, and talk about automation and all that in so future. So that joining section there, is yeah. that um, is that how you kind of connect the two buildings together or the two halves together? That's the hinge to uh, fold the uh, wall down. You're going to see it over there. So we have uh, an I-beam through the middle of the floor and the middle of the ceiling. Yeah. And I think the main reason for that was to reduce the requirements of the panel so that instead of having to be strong enough to pan span 20 feet, they would only have to span 10 and rest on the I-beam. And then the reason it's like that is because it hinges, the, the actual yeah. I-beam uh, hinges. I see. Um, you also see the gaskets here and the yeah. shape to stop water infiltration. Yeah. Those are fork tubes because we pick it up yeah, from there. Forklift trucks, yeah. yeah. So what's the preparation then at the job site? Is it have a foundation or is it a slab or what are you using? It's gonna be compatible with, with any foundation or, or no foundation, just depending on the use case. And then you wanna have utilities ready to connect. That can be solar, it can be the grid, uh, whatever. We're just kind of getting all the, all the heavy lifting done uh, to shortcut the process for the builder developer. So that hopefully their build time goes from six months down to like you know one week or a month or something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. So this is really going to be like the automotive assembly concept we have right. to develop, right? We have one is making as many wall panels universal as possible. Yeah. And then breaking down the tasks, you know, of this operation, because for right now, there's a lot of things happen in this station. They put three walls and they do the plumbing, you know, for the shower, they start right. the bathroom cabinets and all that. And we currently, you know, our target is four hours you know you see we are over four hours now if we achieve four hours we get more than two hours a day but um, 
we, we are, you know, obviously have a have a lot of details to iron out here with uh, standard work and, and, and different operations. So are we looking at the bathroom and the kitchen then, or is that yeah. what I'm Yeah, exactly. Um, and this is kind of what we call the, the core of the unit, where everything is. Yeah. Uh, that's the part that doesn't get folded up right. or, or compressed. And another cool thing is, if you think about a traditional house, you're going in through the door. So even in a factory, you know, you're going in, in through a door uh, to install stuff. For us, you know, this remains open until we're done with it, and then we add the rest on. So. This is easier to access in and out, whether it's a person or, or a robot arm. Yeah. This goes through, we do uh, dielectric testing, you know, make sure electric and all that is yeah, uh, yeah. working, yeah. Um, wrap a couple things. But this one is in the final stages, we can walk in there. So do you ship these things? I don't see a stove in it right now, but yeah, do you ship it with... Um, Actually, that's that's how they get wrapped. That's a fully packed unit. Yeah. It gets this uh, shrink on it. Yeah. And then uh, that's how we, yeah, exactly how it gets shipped. Yeah, but we get all the appliances in. We're able to fit them all into the um, the fixed core of the unit. Um, in the future, we'll we'll probably be able to get furniture in. We're designing our own furniture that'll all pack that fold up. So you ask, that's how we cover some of the piping, right? Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Well, it looks symmetrical, so it, it looks good. Don't like that, though. That's We'll figure something Whatever. out better for that yeah. one. That gets like a, a, you know, a little mask covering Strip, yeah. on it. Then you can see the hinges where the walls fold in and out. Yeah. And uh, you can look in there if you... Oh, it looks crowded. I'm yeah. good. I, I just, uh, I wanted to see that actually right there. Mm -hmm. So um, when this folds up, okay, so when the house homeowner gets it, do they paint the, uh, paint the, uh, uh, the hinges or do they leave them open? Or the hinges they... actually take off. We take oh, them you off. take them off. Yep. There's no need for them. Only when you move yeah. it again, you put them back. Yeah. And we've got some ways to make those go away in the yeah. next generation as well. Um, like some those built-in hinges yeah. inside the, the wall. Yeah. Uh, double, double hinges and stuff. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, the guys in Boxable just gave me the, uh, the tour of the century for the next generation of housing. I'd like to thank Christian and Galliano here for giving me a wonderful tour. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other again. Keep watching, thanks a lot, we'll see ya, bye.